Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I am uh, not going to go over the resolution, the four-page resolution. I hope the members will take a moment to uh, look at uh, the significant accomplishments, the life and legacy of our 16th president, our first president assassinated here in America. Uh, in addition to the photograph that was provided to you on the floor, uh, I also sent an email to the members yesterday, compliments of uh, the capital preservation historian Jason Wilson. Uh, I am a member of the capital preservation committee and I asked him for documents about Abraham Lincoln and his significance here in Pennsylvania. You have two attachments. I hope you have time to read those attachments. I know the members are extremely busy, have a, a ton of information every day. But one of the pictures that you may not have ever seen before is a picture of Abraham Lincoln uh, site where he was laid it, uh, for visitation on the floor of the House of Representatives in 1865. And so if you will open up one of those emails and take a look at it, you will see the floor of the House of Representatives look very, very differently then. And in fact, that building burned to the ground and, and this building was built subsequently and rededicated by Teddy Roosevelt. But it is a tremendous picture uh, and by the way, there is artifacts and a demonstration outside of the lieutenant governor's office uh, that uh, has a facsimile, has, has a reproduction of his casket that he was laid uh, in, in state outside the chamber here this morning. But please take a look at those informations. Also, the Smithsonian uh, just published a collector's item on Abraham Lincoln's assassination. And it gives you some very good history about Pennsylvania's history in the 150th anniversary of the Smithsonian's collector's item on, on Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Mr. Speaker, the death of Abraham Lincoln on the morning of April 15th, 1865, stunned a nation that was still, still celebrating the surrender of Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army of Northern Virginia only six days before. Many in the North wondered how such a tragedy could happen at the time when the war was so close to an end. Bells tolled and cannons were fired in honor of the fallen president. Black mourning decorations and evergreens adorned homes and businesses alike in the North. Eulogies of Lincoln by politicians, preachers, and newspapers and editors began to quickly appear across the North. Even in many of the southern states, Confederate veterans and newspaper editors condemned the assassination of President Lincoln. Plans for that burial were soon being made as the morning spread across the North. Demands to view the martyred president came from every northern state. And on April 18, 1865, the body of President Lincoln lay in state in the East Room of the White House, and over 25,000 people filed the casket. What, what you may not know, however, is the procession on Pennsylvania Avenue was led by African American troops and trailed by a crowd of some 40,000 newly freed slaves. Mr. Speaker, commonly known as Honest Abe, the Washington Times referred to Abraham Lincoln as a decent, sensitive, compassionate, honest, and empathetic man. The former president has also been called guarded, patient, energetic, and easygoing, according to the Lincoln Institute. The man was considered simple, pure, and sincere by many, he was known as a great and humble leader, self-learned, quickly became one of the best-known attorneys in the land for which he represented many, many clients. Lincoln led the nation during the Civil War and ultimately was able to establish the Emancipation Proclamation in our Constitution as the 13th Amendment that abolished slavery in America. By a 
authority of a joint resolution, the Select Committee on the Death of President Lincoln invited the Honorable Henry Champion Deming of Hartford, who was a member of Congress and knew President Lincoln personally, and he had the following to say about his good friend, Abraham Lincoln, in 1865. He commented on the nation's history, the life and character of our late president, so that all could see those qualities of heart and mind by which he endeared himself to the people and which stamped his official acts with a purity and patriotism which command universal respect and admiration. He said the chief mental equipments which Abraham Lincoln brought to the mighty task before him were that downright uncompromising common sense which seems to divine its way through the most intricate problems, a keen insight into human nature, an intimate acquaintance with the spasmodic movements of the American mind, a natural aptitude improved by professional discipline in chaining premise to conclusion and in detecting the occult relations of political cause to political effect, great caution in forming opinions, honesty and sincerity of purpose, inflexible persistence in what he regarded as public duty and a conscientious sense of his responsibility to country and to mankind. He went on to say about his friend Abraham Lincoln, he had a temper habitually cheerful, but not as some have falsely assumed. Inflexibility, so far in my brief acquaintance with him, I have seen it wear every shade from exultation to despair. Laughter in abundance was in him, but tears were also there. To these characteristics should always be added an intuitive comprehension of the precise line which divides right from wrong, an implicit reliance upon the goodness and wisdom of Almighty God. He went on to say, Abraham Lincoln, above and beyond all other men, loved peace and hated war, because sieges, battles, strife, swords, bayonets, rifles, cannon, and all the paraphernalia and instruments of brute force were abhorrent to his enlightened and benevolent nature. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln stunned the nation and abruptly ended the nearly week-long celebration of the surrender of Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army of Northern Virginia. Black crepe and evergreen mourning decorations quickly began to appear across the North. On April 21st, 1865, the funeral train carrying the bodies of Abraham Lincoln and his son, Willie, left Washington, D.C. and rode to Springfield, Illinois, where it arrived 12 days later on May 3rd. 150 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, President Abraham Lincoln, perhaps our greatest president, died while serving our country as no other president has done before or since. Our first president assassinated. May God bless America because of the life, leadership, legacy, and death of Abraham Lincoln 150 years ago that will be forever remembered. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chair.